Hey YouTube, it's Shooky J, and today I'm here to show you how to extend your internet access throughout your entire house using an old spare router. So this one in particular is a Linksys WRT54GS. This is the first model, not that it matters, but there might be different models out there with wireless end capabilities and gigabit switches and all that good stuff. But this is the uh, version 1, it has fast ethernet which is only capable of 100 megabits per second and speed boosted G wireless, so which is not much different than the AT&T Uverse router which only supports fast ethernet and wireless G although this has an advantage because you can have two antennas which means better signal quality and faster speeds. So the point of this is to extend internet access throughout your whole house and we do that by first installing uh, DDWRT and that will be another video I've already done it on this router so I can't go and do it again because it might risk screwing it up it's a very lengthy process but took me about an hour to complete so I recommend doing this when you have a lot of time on your hands because it's a long process you need to install like two firmwares before the actual DDWRT so that's for another video and that's a tough thing to do so let's just stay on topic with this as you can see obviously I would have DDWRT because anybody should know that the WAN port is for wide area network that's what that stands for that means that these LAN ports cannot communicate with anything outside of this so if you were to have the standard Linksys uh, firmware on here and you were to use your WAN port as connecting to your router at another part of your house, that would not work and your computers would not be able to communicate. But since I have DDWRT, there is a option to link up all of these. That gives you a total of five uh, local area network ports. So how it works is this white cable it's like a 50 footer I think and that goes downstairs to my wireless AT&T router which is awful which is another reason for having this but this yellow cable it goes just a short maybe five foot cable not even but it goes to this machine right here which has all sorts of good stuff in it it's from like 1998 been experimenting with that this blue cable comes all the way over here. Yes, I know I have a messy room, but it's not usually like that. I'm uh, gutting out this entertainment center to make room for the computer and stuff. But that's not the point. The point is that this blue cable goes to the router. So let me just show you what I did downstairs. There's not really much to see, but you should see it anyway, just so you know exactly what to do. So again, let me remind you that Usually this white one would be in the local area network, but since I have DDWRT, I'm able to do this, but if you didn't, you would actually want to put this white one in a, in a LAN port rather than the WAN port. So let's head downstairs and I will show you my setup down there. Alright, so here we are in my basement and I apologize for the poor lighting down here. But uh, it's kind of dark because we only have a couple lamps down here. But here we have a, another Dell computer which I use as my home media server. It has a uh, 160 gig hard drive, a 40 gig hard drive that holds the uh, operating system, and a 1 terabyte hard drive. So that holds more than enough than I need for my media and I'm happy with that. But the point is my router. Where in the world is my router? That is the question. So we'll go back here. And you can see that white cord from earlier. It runs up into my ceiling. And this is just an old cord that went to my server when it was relocated in a different spot. But if we follow that white cord, you can see that it goes up here. So my router is actually on a hidden shelf of my entertainment center that you can't see from the front, but the back is accessible. So here we have the standard AT&T Uverse router. I know that the glare is awful from my flash, but I, I apologize for that. So here we have our cable coming in and the data cable. That's for uh, wide area network and TV and phone and all that good stuff. And then here we have our 
four port switch you can see that all four ports are being used this first port goes up to my room to the router and you really don't need to know about any of the other ones I just want to show you that you take the one going up to your second router and you put it in any available LAN port and it should work out just fine so let's go back up to my room alright so here we are again and I have my laptop here and you can see that I have a wire connection I mean you can make out the outline but it doesn't focus that good but yeah I have a wired connection with my laptop and if you even want me to prove it later I have my wireless radio disabled so this all 100% works Ethernet cable I'll let you follow every little detail of it to make sure that I'm not lying to you here it is right here and it meets up with all the other ones in the LAN port and then here's our WAN right here so about right now it's time to switch over to the uh, virtual cam on my computer so I can show you my screen without all this whiting out and blurring and stuff so let's transfer that now alright guys so here we are on my laptop and as you can see in this right hand corner we still have a wired connection and if you take a look the wireless radio is completely disabled and I want to do that just to make sure that we have a 100% accurate representation of what this is going to do so here's the problem er, not the problem but here's the deal we go into Chrome and you can see that we're able to successfully load a web page and while we're at it we might as well go to speedtest.net Oh, I accidentally put a comma instead of a period, oh well. But, um, if you look here, you'll probably see that I have speeds about the same as you would get if you were connecting directly to the router. Obviously, there's going to be a slight ping difference being connected to a router in the middle. So, 60, it's usually about 54, so it doesn't really add that much ping time. The speed is not going to be affected at all. But as you can see, I do have a pretty bad internet plan from Uverse AT&T. But the upload speed, if you think that's bad, wait till you see the upload speed. It's just horrible. So I can hardly even get 1 megabit per second, which is like 0.8 megabytes per second. So it, it's pretty bad. So you kind of get the point of that. It was just to test if there's a significant difference in the ping. Usually with this AT&T, I get a 54 millisecond ping time around there. This time it was 60, so there's not really a huge difference. But this is the true test that will prove that I have this set up correctly. So there is, again, a WAN port and a LAN and they are joined together so let's see if that is actually true or if DDWRT has been lying to us so 192.168.1.1 is exactly what you need to do to get into your DDWRT and as you can see it actually enables that to happen so one thing I did here to show you proof if you don't believe me enough already is that once this loads up I can scroll down just a little bit and it says assign WAN port to switch I have that checked and what that means is that well I can have a fifth LAN port pretty much so we can scroll back up and we'll show you the wireless section anybody who has AT&T Uverse knows that it's wireless G and that it's really really horrible but if you have another router it's probably even better than that AT&T has really low grade uh, equipment so even this Linksys router is going to have better wireless capabilities so what I did is I disabled the Wi-Fi radio on AT&T's router and I enabled it on my personal router and as you can see here I have my own setup and security and everything but this is the test you've all been waiting for trying to access AT&T's home portal from a second edition router so let's do that now 
there's two way to do it just type in home portal and it'll go it'll bring you there or you can do 192.168.1.254 and if you do that AT&T again horrible horrible service provider it's gonna take a good 20 seconds to get there it even would if you were directly connected to it the router has nothing to do with it it's just AT&T has really really poor quality any day now that was more than 20 seconds you see this is exactly the reason that you would want to do something like this because AT&T sucks but after a little bit of waiting it did go there and as you can see there are no like wireless things and if there were well it was a while ago if it actually did happen so as you can see even something such as an iPhone it says wireless that's an old one but um see another iPhone that says Ethernet that that's not possible they don't even make adapters that can let you plug your iPhone into Ethernet and if they do I was not aware of that and I should probably get one but to my knowledge they don't have those so that just proves to you my setup is a hundred percent legitimate as I say it is so I'm not really sure what else to say I pretty much summed it all up right there that is just a brief introduction on how to set up a little home network and bypass AT&T's horrible networking so that's pretty much it don't forget to like comment and subscribe share this video with anybody that you know that has a router sitting around and hates AT&T like we all do so we'll see you next time